Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and call the um, September 26, 2017 meeting to order. Um, before we get started, um, I'd just like to introduce the supervisors that are here. Um, from the Mattapanai District, we have Mr. Floyd Thomas. From the Bowling Green District, we have Mr. Jeff Seeley. From the Reedy Church District, we have Mr. Reggie Underwood. From the Port Royal District, we have Mrs. Nancy Long. And I'm Jeff Black, representing the Western Caroline District. At this time, um, if we could stand for an invocation by Mrs. Long. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your many wonderful blessings. We ask your guidance to lead us in wise decisions and fairness and justice for all. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. 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 Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, opening, opening board comments. Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I do have one. I was uh, contacted by a citizen in the Central Point area, which is part of Mr. Seeley's district, and he just happened to be an old friend. Um, the first point I wanted to mention, especially since Dr. Parker and school board members are here, is this particular gentleman has uh, two children in school, and he wanted me to know what an improvement the school system had made in the past couple of years. And I told him I would pass that on to Dr. Parker and members of the school board and say we, we appreciate the good work you're doing. And that's something we need to make sure the press knows and, and uh, we get out there more often. But his other point was uh, he was a disabled veteran. And the county has a disabled veteran policy for real estate taxes. But they do not have one or we do not have one for personal property taxes. And I was wondering if the board would consider that for wounded combat veterans. Um, okay, well, Mr. Seeley is saying the General Assembly has to, has to uh, let us do it, but I'd like to see if the county would do it before so we could ask the General Assembly if that was possible. Now, he also said that Hanover has that. So I, I don't know if they got a special rider, but... That was the... Rec that, that was the request, and I'm sure you can talk some more about it, but if the board would consider an agenda item to investigate the possibility of providing personal property tax relief for wounded veterans, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Seeley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd first like to talk about um, this past weekend we had the USO dance, which was Saturday evening, which was a fabulous event. A, a lot of folks attended, but... Prior to that, what most people don't realize is we had the History Mobile here on Wednesday and Thursday, and we had 360 students go through. I took pictures Friday afternoon of, I mean, scads of students going from the um, museum in town to the town hall to the History Mobile, a lot of, of parent participation with the students, and I just want to say what a great sight that was to see all of those students get to participate in something that the state actually put together and brought. And I have talked to the gentleman that Mr. Thomas has mentioned, and my understanding is the General Assembly has to give us permission to do that. And that was as far as I got with it, and I don't think that we're on that or the state has done that. So we can look. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a couple... First state fair opens on 29th, so look, hoping that everyone will get a chance out, get a chance to go out to the state fair and enjoy the many activities there at the state fair. Probably on another note, Mr. Chairman, um, with all the unrest across the country regarding the flag and comments made by different political fashions, um, I think we should really take the time to celebrate the differences, our disagreements, and all those things that make us the fabric of America. I think 
we all share in many, many successes by all. And I think it's a time that we come together. Um, I was talking to someone, and I told them at some point we're going to have to come together and have some real conversations as well in Caroline County. And when that time comes, we need to make sure that we are proven to be who we say we are, and that is Americans. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mrs. Long? Well, I am glad to report that the Pirates invaded the town of Port Royal, and they had a successful day, and there were no mutinies that I know of. It seemed like everyone had a good time uh, on the uh, 16th. Uh, I also attended the uh, World War II USO dance, had a great time. It was wonderful to see a lot of people out. Uh, we had an honorary table for our veterans, and all the veterans that we knew of were uh, invited. We had two show up, and also someone who was a hostess dur uh, during the USA dances. Uh, and the State Fair, as Mr. Underwood stated, is coming up, so everyone go and support and have a great time. Thank you. Thank you. I have a few. Um, just wanted to thank those uh, that were responsible for putting on the World War uh, II ceremony and dance on uh, Saturday night. It was an awesome event. It kind of brings you back in time. The big band was really kind of a neat thing for someone who's a history teacher. Uh, kind of fun to see history in action and um, people having a good time around uh, something that was a big part of our country's history, you know, uh, in the 1940s. So um, uh, to those people that were responsible, um, Kathy Beard, uh, Susan Seeley, and those people are responsible for helping put this together. That was an, uh, one, of the, one of the best events um, in Caroline County. It was just amazing. Um, the next thing, uh, last week I had the opportunity to, uh, as chairman, I've tried to go around, I, I try to go around every year um, and meet with our different departments. And uh, over the summer, unfortunately, I was not able to meet with the Public Utilities Department. Uh, and I had an opportunity to do that last week. Um, and I, first of all, I say I appreciate their ability to be very candid. Um, I didn't want them to be afraid because there was a supervisor there in any way. I, I wanted them to be honest, upfront, and open with their opinions on um, different things that are going on in the county. So I appreciate the uh, discussion that was had at that meeting. I think that's uh, pretty important uh, for um, what's happening in the county. Um, one side note on that to the Board of Supervisors uh, that was kind of brought up, obviously you can imagine uh, as employees the salary study was a, a, a big thing to them. Um, but one other thing that they did mention that was uh, very important to them was the, um, actually the convenience site in Bowling Green. Um, they, um, they said that the, um, and is actually thinking as far as the citizens are concerned, we still don't have a, uh, basically a place where someone can just back up and unload their, and since Bowling Green is the place that has, that takes a lot of different, uh, the most like tiles and so forth, Bowling Green takes certain things that other, uh, other I guess convenience sites do not, so they said that would be really, really helpful uh, for the citizens to have. Um, so I think that might be something we want to look at um, um, for the citizens. Uh, also, um, do want to once again reiterate everyone the state fair is coming up so please go out and uh, enjoy the fair that's one of the big things obviously that's a trademark of Caroline County and we appreciate the fair being here uh, we did get I don't know if you all got the thank you letter did you guys get the thank you letter in your packet um, all right so that's from the Pumin said Regional Creek Jail all right for continuing their VRS benefits so um, that's something we can um, you know I guess uh, appreciate and also finally uh, you can see that we've got coming up in our packet um, the issue of Aqua Virginia, um, and I just we'll talk more about it later. But it's a uh, it's a very recurring and very very frustrating um, issue to deal with, um, and and I can honestly say, uh, and I and I think Mr. Whiteman can attend, uh, you know, kind of agree with me on this that I get more calls um, about complaints about the water company. Um, in, my, in my region than I do about taxes. And, and that's true. Um, and it's, uh, that's, that's, that's frustrating. That's, that's, that's very frustrating um, when you're, and it affects home values, but we'll talk more about that. And it's just, it's not going away anytime soon, unfortunately. So um, 
just want to kind of bring that up. So that's it for my opening board comments. Okay, uh, amendments to the agenda. Are there any amendments to the agenda? Mr. Chairman, if I may, could I add uh, consent agenda item D, which requests staff to investigate personal property tax relief for disabled veterans? Just a uh, just an investigation, right? A staff investigation yes. to see okay. if we have the authority to do it since we are a Dillon rule state and can only do anything if our daddy says it's okay. Okay. Is there anything else that we need to... Mr. Mr. Chairman, we would like to add a uh, proposed consent item uh, uh, E, um, and it's a resolution designating the week of October 8th through the 14th, 2017, as Fire oh. Prevention Week in Caroline County. I'm sorry, your, yours was 3D and I, I used D. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. It's okay. It'll say E. It's, it's all right. Fire Prevention Week. Are there any other um, amendments to the agenda? Uh, no, sir, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right. Move the agenda to be adopted as requested. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. All right, presentations and reports. First of all, we have the introduction of Mr. Curtis Finney as the new finance director, effective January 1st, 2018. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, <clears throat> uh, members of the public, I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Curtis Finney, uh, who will be, he is in the capacity of, of deputy finance director working with Mrs. Hatcher. Uh, for now, he started uh, last week, I believe it was, on Monday of last week, and he's, he's back so far. Uh, so uh, we look forward to working with him. Uh, he'll be taking over uh, full-time for Mrs. Hatcher. He's here full-time, but he'll be taking over as finance director come January 1, and we're very pleased to have him here with us. Welcome, Mr. Finney. Thank you. So, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Any words of wisdom for us on your start? Well, I'm told that I'm filling some really big shoes, and in the time that I've been here, I'm seeing that those shoes are probably bigger than most people think. But I'm up for the challenge, and I think as long as we all work together, we can achieve a lot of great things. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Could I say something, Mr. Chairman? Two, two little quick things, Mr. Finney. Um, the county's in great financial shape now. Absolutely. So you know if anything goes wrong, it's going to be your fault. Well, for the first six months, I'm going to blame Fran, but after that, I take full responsibility. I like that attitude. All right, um, just, just, just kind of kidding. And the other thing is, would Mr. Cully forward uh, Mr. Finney's resume to us so we can know a little bit more about him? So I appreciate it. Best of luck. Thank you. Brian, you forgot to tell them that's your favorite place to be in the meeting, in front of the podium. Next up, we have a um, plaque recognizing Mr. Taylor Hicks for representing Caroline County in the Virginia Utility um, Rodeo and International uh, Locate Radio. So, um, is Mr. Hicks... Here. He is. Mr. Sheep is here too. Okay, very good. So, come on down to the come on down to the podium if you would, please. Mr. Hicks, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, we have here a plaque for, for Outstanding Achievement Award, uh, and it says, Presented to Taylor A. Hicks, in recognition of your exceptional accomplishments in representing Caroline County, Virginia. First place in the Buried Treasure event at the 2017 Virginia Section of the American Waterworks Association Distribution Seminar and Utility Rodeo Competition in Lynchburg, Virginia. A valiant effort in the International Utility Lo uh, Locate radio, uh, Rodeo Competition, Water Division, Dallas, Texas. Congratulations on a job well done from the Caroline County Board of Supervisors and your fellow employees, September 2017. Congratulations. 
We're gonna we're gonna get you up here for a picture in a minute, but first, do you have any anything that you'd like to say? Yeah. <laughs> well, I do, I do, Taylor. Uh, considering I've watched you grow up, uh, I want to thank you very much for presenting the county and, uh, in the competition and for all the excellent work you do for us every you know every day. Uh, I've seen you down in Port Royal before I moved to this seat, digging holes and trying to find leaks and um, know your family well. And I know your mom's just beaming down with that beautiful smile tonight, proud of you. And uh, even though we keep you busy, congratulations on your biggest, hardest job with Weston, your new little boy. And uh, just work hard at that too, being a devoted parent, because we need good leaders. And goodness knows the Hicks family has deep roots in this county, and we want to keep that little guy here, because we're going to need leaders in the future. But well done on both counts. Thank you. Does anyone have any other questions or comments? All right, why don't you come on up? We'll take some pictures. and. Alrighty. Next up, we have a presentation from the Caroline County Habitat for Humanity. Mr. Jason Tickle, the Executive Director. Hello. I want to thank you all for allowing me the time to speak with you guys. I feel so much more comfortable seeing many of us probably go to the same barber. So, uh, just thank you. Um, um, so, with that, I just want to... I wanna... resemble that remark. <laughs> there uh, with that, I would just like to give you guys an update. We uh, just relaunched our local affiliate about six months ago. We've been here for over 20 years, but we had just hadn't had a lot of traction. Um, so uh, we've, we've restarted everything, and I just want to kind of give you guys an update of where we are. Most people know two things about Habitat. Ironically, both of those are usually wrong. The first one is that Jimmy Carter started us. And although he is our most famous volunteer and responsible for having over 400 homes built, he wasn't our founder. A gentleman by the name of Millard Fuller actually started us in 1976, which was a great year. Uh, our 
bicentennially and the year I was born, ironically, another good thing that happened that year. Um, so those, that's one thing that happened uh, that many people think that, that uh, Jimmy Carter started it, but he didn't. The second thing is that we give homes away, uh, which we do not. What we do is we sell them at cost to homeowners that couldn't go into a bank and uh, make a traditional purchase. We do that two ways. The first way is we use volunteers, as many of you have known. Some of you I've met out there at events, and you've been on Habitat sites. Um, but we use volunteers to build the home, so the labor costs are greatly reduced. But really what makes it affordable is the special financing that we offer. Um, Habitat has kind of two ways they finance. First one is a traditional zero interest loan. Uh, that's something that we hope to be able to bring back to Carolina in the future. But every time we build that, we have to raise all that money for that house up front. So that's a slow process. So what we've started to do is we've looked outside uh, the third party lenders to help us. And our primary lender is the USDA using their 502 direct program. They have a great loan program for rural counties. Every, every street in our county fits in this uh, category. Um, based, the people we're going to build for, they're going to get an interest rate as low as one and a quarter percent. And to further make that payment affordable, they stretch it out to 38 years. Right now we have a three bedroom, two bath model that we think we're going to be able to uh, build and sell with about a $600 a month payment. So imagine if you're a, a single parent or somebody um, working, making 25, 30,000 a year, you know, paying eight, 900 bucks a month in rent and you can switch to owning a home. Um, I'm passionate about home ownership because I've seen the studies. Um, kids are 118% more likely to go to college if their parents own a home because of the stability it provides. But also nowadays we see a lot of strife in our country and a lot of that I believe is because of there's just not enough economic opportunity. Owning a home, in my opinion, is the best way to give people a good foundation for economic opportunity. According to the Federal Reserve in 2013, the average renter was worth about $5,400. That's how much if they cashed in all their chips they're worth. The average homeowner is worth almost $190,000. So it, it's kind of a no-brainer. As you pay on that home, your family is building wealth. Many times, people that are stuck in generational poverty, they don't have a lot of the same opportunities that you and I have been afforded, where they get things passed down to them from their relatives and stuff like that. So that's one of the things that helps really lift people out of that, when, out of the, those generational poverties, when they do have that help in those things that they can leave on to their children. Um, as a faith-based organization, we believe in many of, you know, in, in like Proverbs says, you know, he who leaves to their children is a wise person. And so we want to encourage people to do that. Um, we believe that we've found two applicants that we're going to be billing for very, very soon. So keep an eye on your emails for invitations to our groundbreaking ceremonies. Um, and I know I'm going fast, but we've got a lot to cover, so I, I don't want to keep you too... You know, use up too much of my time. So the next thing that I want to update you on is our home repair program. This is something that I think the community is really going to get behind. Uh, we use volunteers to do the repairs just like we do with the new homes. Um, the main difference with this is not only are we able to connect people with low interest loans through the USDA, we also partner with DCHD to offer uh, emergency home repairs and accessibilities. So we can get grants for low-income families that own their home, mostly seniors and, and folks with disabilities. We can go in and put a roof on a home, build a ramp, things like that. In fact, we're doing our first large-scale project this Monday. You're all invited to come. It's actually World Habitat Day, um, but we're going to reside a house on Edgewood Street. Uh, we have the press coming out there to, you know, so we can spotlight the need for affordable housing around the world and in Caroline. Um, so you're all welcome. If you want to come out and help side this home, no experience is necessary. Um, but I do have flyers available. If anybody wants those, it tells you how you can volunteer, how you can buy a Habitat home, as well as how you can apply for a home repair. Um, so I just want to thank you guys for this opportunity, and I'll be glad to answer any questions anybody may have. Anyone have any questions? Comments? Anyone? All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. What's, wait, Mr. Seeley, oh, Mr. Mr. Tickle. Mr. Tickle, we have a, we do have a. Can there is there an opportunity for folks to look for you online for an application, or 
how else can they get a hold of you? Is there phone numbers, that kind of stuff? Great question. Yeah, we don't have a local office yet. We're trying to find one. Uh, if anybody wants to help out, hint, hint, we're definitely looking. Um, uh, you can go to habitatofcaroline.org, and you can print our repair application there. Now, the home application, because there's so many misgivings, you have to attend the orientation meeting. We do those live. The next one is on the 14th at the Bowling Green Library. But also, we try to use technology. So we, we do Facebook Live videos. Nowadays, everybody's got smartphones. So we've, we do those interest meetings via Facebook where they can tune in. We present it, and then we email them an application or mail it as well. Okay. So Thank try, you. Try to make it easy. And then we come to their house. Um, I'll, I'll meet with people in the evenings, Saturdays. It doesn't matter. We're really trying to get a go of this, and so we're being as flexible as, as we can. Mr. Tickle, if you don't mind, would you leave some of that information with Mr. Parton? Excuse can me? Can you leave some of that information that you've got in your hands with Mr. Parton, the Assistant County Administration, um, yeah, Administrator? Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Okay. All righty. Um, moving on, uh, we have the presentation from the Caroline County Public Schools. Dr. Parker? Good evening, Chairman Black, Vice Chairman Long. Uh, this evening, uh, Dr. Herbert Monroe, uh, the Director of School Leadership and Improvement, will provide an update for the, for the board on school and, uh, achievement and accreditation. Uh, this is a culminating presentation for the school system, and hopefully it will be informative for the board, uh, as, and I will assist with answering any questions. So at this time, I'll bring Dr. Monroe up to begin his presentation once we have the electronics. You should have a blue um, folder on your desk which has the slides from the presentation. I didn't want you to have to turn around. Um, and Dr. Monroe will lead you through that presentation. Well, I want to start off by saying, um, that both of my parents were principals. And it's interesting that uh, my parents told me, they said, Herbie, whatever you do, don't go into education. And like every good kid, you know, I listen to my parents. But I just want to say that um, I'm very passionate about education. I'm a Henrico resident, um, and that's where I have most of my experience. But I just want to say that it's been a blessing being here in Caroline. So I just want to thank um, the Caroline County School Board, Dr. Parker, for believing in me, and uh, my experience here has been awesome thus far. With that being said, um, Chairman Black, Vice Chair Long, members of the board and county officials, my name is uh, Dr. Monroe, and I serve as the Director of School Leadership and Improvement. Behind you tonight, there will be a presentation on the academic review for the year 2016-17 for Caroline County Public Schools. I would like to start this evening with a division highlight. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. If you can drive for me, I appreciate it. Uh, this time last year, only two of our five schools were fully accredited. And we are excited to announce that Madison Elementary School met and exceeded all SOL targets to be added to the accreditation list, moving Caroline County from 40% of its schools being fully accredited to 60% of its school being fully accredited as we kick off the 2017-18 school year. Our goal this year is to be 100% fully accredited, and based on our successful opening, we feel in position to make our goal a true reality. In reviewing the success of our elementary schools, all schools have made accreditation two consecutive years in the areas of math, science, and social studies. In addition, we have seen a significant decrease in staff turnover this year. We have also implemented common assessments every two weeks 
to have ongoing student progress monitoring to provide students early intervention when needed. The addition of research-based instructional programs and increased literacy resources have been added as well to all elementary schools. Schools now have leveled book rooms. We have implemented Fontas and Pinnell reading resources school-wide, and we have additional iPads to support literacy. We believe that these resources, along with focused professional development in our research-based programs, will lead to all schools being fully accredited. Next slide. Our 2017-18 accreditation status for the three elementary schools are as follows. As you can see, Madison Elementary is fully accredited. Lewis and Clark is fully accredited. Bowling Green Elementary School did not meet the SOL target in reading with a preliminary score of 70%. However, there was no regression in SOL performance from spring 2016 to spring 2017 in the area of reading for Bowling Green students. Being that Bowling Green has met accreditation in math, science, and social studies, we are currently seeking the partially accredited reconstituted rating by the Virginia Department of Education. Next slide. Key action items to ensure increased student performance across all content areas among our elementary schools are, number one, progress monitoring that includes a laser focus on academics, attendance, and behavior across all groups with special emphasis on students with disabilities, economically disadvantaged students, and English language learners in all schools across all content areas. Click it one more time. Thank you. We will be providing job embedded professional development to help teachers increase rigor and create lessons that encompass critical thinking, creative thinking, and collaboration that enhances student performance. We will be assisting teachers new to Caroline County Public Schools through the Novice Teacher Mentor Program, where new teachers are assigned mentors and given peer support in all content areas. Our principals and assistant principals participate in content and grade level professional learning communities called PLCs to engage alignment of the written, taught, and tested curriculum. And, click one more time, instructional program champions have been assigned at the school board office and school levels to ensure the newly acquired instructional programs such as Lucy Calkins for writing, Dreambox for math, and Apex for credit recovery are implemented with fidelity to close the learning gaps of students in grades K-12. Next slide. Next, I will review the accreditation status, highlights, areas of focus, and next steps for Caroline Middle School as they journey to full accreditation. Currently, we have submitted documentation seeking continued Virginia Department of Education approval of partially accredited reconstitution status under the criteria of a newly hired middle school principal with a proven Virginia track record of success in a similar school. What that means is this. Our current newly hired middle school principal has documented years of experience as a successful Virginia middle school principal has worked at a middle school with similar demographics to Caroline Middle School, and has submitted student performance data demonstrating increased academic performance of all students, reduction in discipline, and ongoing academic progress specifically with black students, learners with disabilities, and economically disadvantaged students. For these reasons, we strongly believe the Virginia Department of Education will grant Caroline Middle School the rating of partially accredited, reconstituted, based on the acquisition of the newly hired principal. Next slide. The main focus for Caroline Middle School is being fully accredited. However, we would like to celebrate the 98% pass rate in our VAP testing, 100% pass rate in seventh grade civics and economics, 100% pass rate in geometry and in world history. We're also happy to announce that the students at Caroline Middle School exceeded SOL targets in science. In addition to the focus on being fully accredited, the new principal has already established a consistent systematic classroom management and discipline program through positive behavior supports where students, teachers, administration, and parents all have common expectations for students on the bus, halls, classrooms, cafeteria, and at extracurricular events. 
This has already created a very positive culture of teaching and learning at the middle school that is felt by all stakeholders. Other practices include embedding collaborative special education models through professional development and support from TTAC, the team from William & Mary who specializes in collaborative best practices for teachers, increasing opportunities in math, reading, and writing by offering a new math and reading workshop course and a school-wide writing program. We will also continue our proactive hiring practices and teacher mentor program to hire and maintain highly qualified staff. In order to complete these tasks, the school board office team will work collaboratively with building leadership to provide training on positive behavior interventions and supports. We will continue to develop professional learning communities, instructional leadership team feedback, and the school support team process to marshal resources from the central office level to the classroom teachers. And we will also have administrative check-ins with assistant principals through the Caroline County Public School leadership growth model to ensure the success of the overall school program. We will also conduct program audits. We will be building teacher leadership skills. We will continue with TTAC support. We will be evaluating the effectiveness of our math and literacy courses, as well as our new writing program. And we will continue with our early teacher recruitment efforts. We also will be the major steps that we will take to ensure full accreditation for Caroline Middle School. Next slide. As we all are aware, teacher turnover has been a concern at the middle school for quite some time. In the 2016-17 school year, all departments at Caroline Middle School were affected by the high rates of teacher turnover. And that will be the farthest bar to the right. You can see the rates of teacher attrition there. However, what I would like to share is that in the current school year, Turnover continues to remain high. But the good news is this. The level of experience, next slide, please. The level of experience with the newly hired teachers has increased. Of the 15 newly hired teachers at the middle school, five have over 10 years of experience, four have over four to nine years of experience, three have one to three years of experience, and only three are new to teaching. This was the result of early teacher recruitment efforts offering letters of intent to highly qualified candidates, traveling to areas and universities that have a reputation for producing effective teachers, such as Pennsylvania and New York, and allowing our teacher leaders to share their positive Carolina experiences. We believe the highly qualified teachers and administrators will ensure our students are prepared for high school as Carolina Middle School moves onward and upward to full accreditation. Last but not least, I'd like to feature our Caroline High School. Next slide, please. As we transition to Caroline High School, we are proud to announce that the high school is once again fully accredited. Some of the highlights include, we had 32 students receive local, state, and national CTE awards. We also had an increase in our AP enrollment. We had major increases in our workplace readiness and WISE assessments. And just for your information, the Workplace Readiness Assessment measures a student's personal qualities, professionalism, and technological literacy skills in order to assess readiness for employment after high school. And students passing the WISE test earn the WISE Certified Financially Literate designation, which demonstrates that they are financially literate when they graduate. Now, after they graduate and go out into the world, we don't know what happens after that. <laughs> Areas of focus also include increasing literacy across all content areas, expanding our CTE opportunities and programs, and building community and business partnerships. In highlighting our next steps, the school board office team will be working collaboratively with the building administrators and increasing professional development on effective teaching strategies where learning will involve creative thinking, communication, critical thinking, collaboration, and more student interaction and less teacher lecture. We'll be expanding opportunities with Germana Community College, MCD, and the Bowling Green Rehab Center. Through now, we are currently working with Germana to offer career pathway courses, internships with MCD, and launching a fully certified nurses' aid program with Bowling Green Rehabilitation Center. We'll be extending our STEM opportunities 
by including a new STEM lab as part of the renovation at Caroline High School. And we will continue to communicate the great things going on at Caroline High School through Facebook, Twitter, and weekly Blackboard announcements to families and community, highlighting scholarship information, upcoming events, awards, and recognitions. Next slide, please. We would also like to cordially invite all of you to our homecoming celebration on October the 6th. On October the 6th, Carolina High School will be celebrating their homecoming and hosting tours of the newly renovated building from 4 to 5.30. We would like to make sure all of you come out for our ribbon cutting at 5.30, and we hope that you stay for the homecoming parade that will start at 6. And upon the completion of the parade, we will have a tailgating celebration prior to the kickoff at 7 p.m. Once again, I want to tell you that I'm very honored to be here in Caroline, and I want to thank all of you for your attention this evening. And at this time, do you have any questions or comments? Last slide, please. In December. In December. Mr. Thomas? Actually, I don't have any questions. Mr. Seeley? No, sir, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Underwood? Uh, I do, but I'll hold off until we do our meeting in December. Okay. Okay. Mr. Vaughn? No problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, next up we have the uh, capital, capital projects update. Yes. Um, yes, Dr. Monroe. Could you um, send that email at presentation, if you don't mind, to um, Mr. Cully and the county uh, and Mr. Parton as well, and then they'll send it off to us. Okay. Thank you. Chairman Black, Vice Chairman Long. At this time, we'll have a presentation by Mr. Honan of the overall Caroline construction project, as well as an update on the construction budget and associated uh, financials uh, with that project. Uh, at that time, Mr. Honan will, uh, and I, I will assist Mr. Honan with answering any questions, uh, and we will seek the uh, final appropriation of those dollars needed to um, uh, make the final payments re related to the, pro to the uh, project. Mr. Honan? Thank you. Chairman Black, Ms. Long, members of the board, citizens, I'm here tonight to bring you an update on the uh, renovation of the schools. Um, I have, um, I'll start out by giving you an overview of the, um, of each of the, each of the schools and then a, um, go through some, uh, and go through some of the enhancements that we did to the schools during the uh, renovation, uh, and we'll conclude with a, um, financial update. Um, at MES, additional education spaces were added, including four new classrooms, which are currently used for kindergarten, a STEM lab, computer lab, uh, a new media center, and an, an administrative area. Um, creating this administrative area on the front of the building created a managed entrance for parents, visitors, which we hope will increase security for students and staff. The building also received an updated consolidated fire alarm system. A bus loop was created, which provided for a safe loading and unloading zone of children separate from car, car rider and other traffic. A, um, in the cafeteria, we added a second serving line, which decreased the amount of time that children were, had to wait in line to receive their meals um, during a school day. Um, during the course of the renovation at Madison, um, facility enhancements were, um, were done, including um, Increase the size of the faculty parking lot to provide for ample parking for our staff and also to reduce congestion and to facilitate an improved and safer traffic flow for car riders, drop-off, and pickup. Uh, conduits were placed as sidewalks were installed to allow the, the co-op, the REC, came in and installed uh, efficient new LED parking lot lighting, uh, which saved the project something on the order of $80,000. And provided for a um, safer parking lot for nighttime and evening activities. Um, we are in the process of closing out the MES project. Um, 
that's some of the enhancements, the other enhancements we did. Uh, some of the closeout items included um, this, this soil that was around the perimeter building was found to be of uh, very poor quality, so we had them come back and replace all of that topsoil with a more suitable product, and, and uh, it was reseeded, and, and we now have, um, we feel like we can now develop a proper lawn around the building. Uh, the contractor also uh, painted some, uh, all of the uh, existing hallways and some other spaces throughout the existing building, which was outside the original scope of the work. Uh, he installed a school name on the front of the building, and um, ironically, we're now trying to finish out the uh, DEQ paperwork and, and make sure we get all our file inspections from DEQ as the final hurdle, which, if those of you who remember, that was sort of the first hurdle we had to cross to be able to start this project. Um, moving on to Caroline High School, um, the first major improvement done at the high school was the replacing of a failing roof over the entire building. Uh, we then, <coughs> we all, the building also received a replacement of the aging HVAC and air conditioning systems, upgrades to the electrical system. Uh, every classroom received a new air conditioning equipment new ceilings, lighting, and all the rooms were painted. Um, the initial budget called for the roof to receive basically just a repair and overlay uh, system. But once we got into it, we found out that um, there was significantly more damage than, than we had originally been able to detect. So we did what was called a uh, tear-off and complete replacement, which then that building now had the roof has a 20-year warranty. So um, that's a... Um, Hopefully, puts that to bed for a long time. Um, the, um, in the cafeteria, we uh, increased the dining room or seating area um, to allow for um, to reduce congestion in an area, increase student comfort. Um, in addition, there were um, in total there were 14 new classrooms ultimately added to the building which would bring the potential capacity to that school up to approximately 1,600. Um, the sports and PE department were also received uh, some additional space that allows for um, all PE activities as well as both girls and boys sports and teams to have adequate practice and competitive space. Um, we moved the media center to the uh, front of the building along with the administrative area, again, creating a consolidated entrance that's supervised and uh, with the idea of, again, increasing student and staff security. Um, some of the enhancements that we did, obviously I talked about the roof. Um, an automated fire alarm system with remote notification was uh, added to the building Flooring upgrades, we were, we were able to do, as we went along, we identified some areas where we were going to be subject to high traffic, and we were able to upgrade the um, flooring from um, VCT to Terrazzo in those areas, which, as we all know, has a, has a higher durability. Um, in the, um, as part of the... Uh, Initial plans for the building, it called for some of the existing classrooms in the CTE wing to house a new certified nurse's aid program. In order to receive approval for this, to offer this program, we hired a career nurse last year and began the process of developing the application for approval. It was determined that our initial plan did not meet the physical space requirements for the program. Specifically, the nurse's space must not only have classroom space, but also a laboratory space for beds, industry standard equipment, and facilities such as a, a, a handicapped restroom where students can learn the details of providing proper care to patients. Consequently, we, reserve, we revised our CTE plan for the high school, including a nursing lab and additional teaching space. We hope to offer this credentialing program to an initial group of nursing students starting in 2018. Uh, next slide. There was also, in addition to the changes with the nursing, our career Interest surveys, which were administered to students in 2016, indicated a greater interest in STEM and other advanced science-related careers. Our initial plans called for an HVAC space, which did not 
yield a significant level of student interest. To ensure that we were able to expand STEM education and provide for opportunities for students to engage in this advanced science and engineering related activities, a design for a STEM innovation lab was developed. This lab, when completed, will house a work area for STEM and robotics, a functional classroom, a maker space, which will house items such as a 3D printer, laser cutter, soldering stations, and other uh, tools and equipment. Additionally, a section will be developed for an acid wash station. The STEM lab will eventually house an introductory engineering or exploratory courses in the areas such as physics and technology. Additionally, other student choice activities such as robotics and drone clubs could work out of this space. Uh, now, to the financials. We have, um, as you can see, the, the original um, bond was $25,058.31. We've accrued interest over the period of $156,176.07. Total payments of $24,623,570.35. And those payments were made um, monthly. When we started in the beginning of the project. We would uh, receive the bills, collect those bills, uh, take them before the school board, receive approval, and then we would forward them to the county um, for payment uh, once the school board had approved them. The, um, as, of, as of September 17, there is $532,664.03 remaining um, in the bond. Next slide. Um, one of the unique things that we did in this project was we uh, undertook a, a program called Owner Purchase Materials where the vendors would uh, determine the, amount, the, the types and quantities of materials that they needed. Um, they would then submit a request to us. We would issue a purchase order for those materials. And as a um, school system, we were uh, tax exempt from sales tax. And the contractors, uh, the subcontractors and suppliers were not. So we were able to afford a, uh, approximately a 5.3% reduction in the cost of those materials, which we then took that, um, as you can see, we spent almost $6 million in owner purchase materials, which gave us a, um, on, uh, additional funds of, of $317,805 that was... Uh, rolled into our contingency fund. Um, and the um, anticipated remaining cost for the project is, there's, as I said earlier, there's 500 some thousand dollars of retaining uh, remaining bond funds. The anticipated remaining cost is a million twenty thousand three hundred forty one dollars and seventy one cents. So an anticipated additional funding requirement of uh, $487,677.68 is, is what our anticipated um, funding to, to finish the project. But we would be asking for a, an appropriation out of the um, allotment that we set aside back in January for uh, $550,000. And that's just the excess would just be to handle any additional items that might, we're, we're fairly close. If you go to the next slide, you can see we're at the high school. We're basically um, just over a week away from completing the CTE and nurses and the innovation lab. Uh, we anticipate having the punch list finished by the end of, end of next week and uh, final completion of paperwork and as-built warranties, all that stuff by the uh, end of the month. So we don't anticipate uh, any surprises from here on out, but rather than having to come back to you and ask for some small amount to, to increase to finish the project, we were asking for that uh, $550,000 number. And as you can see, again, at Madison, I just, again, I'm saying we're down to the final paperwork. We've had meetings with both, uh, with DEQ and the contract, or not DEQ, but uh, the county soil and erosion folks, and we, we're waiting to get the final paperwork to satisfy all the DEQ's um, requirements. All right, I thank you on behalf of the students for a, uh, we're now able to provide a, a 
more comfortable, safe, and energy efficient learning environment. At this time, we'll answer any questions that the board may have. Mr. Uh, Thomas. Yes, just a couple. Um, Mr. Honan said there was one million two hundred uh, one million twenty thousand left in anticipated cost. Yes, sir. And I, I'm not sure where those came from. That's part of the project, or that is those are remaining costs that we anticipate will be associated with. Uh, any uh, contractor payments, change orders, anything that that uh, that um, will close the program out. All right, things that are things that were outside of the scope. Yeah. you said change orders. So. There were several. There were uh, again, we pay bills monthly. Right. So um, since August 6, 2016, our bills are paid monthly, and included in those bills are approved change orders. So okay. a change orders were paid throughout the pro throughout the project. Okay. So every month there uh, they may there may be disputes with change orders. Um, once those change orders are approved, we would submit a, a bill to the school board for approval right. for um, vendor payments, payment to the contract, OWPR and subcontractors, approved change orders, and owner purchase materials. That started since the beginning of the project. Right. So monthly, and then that, once that is approved, that bill will go to the county, and, they, and it would be applied to the bond. But, the, but so, what, you, what you're saying but not saying is, the change orders actually increased the cost of the project. Change orders did increase the, cha the cost okay. of the pro project, and as we anticipated when we right. initially came to the board. I mean, that's, I'm not saying you're wrong. Yes, I, I, you know, I understand how that works for the most part. How much of this extra funding is from change orders, or do we have a list of what this million dollars is? We uh, yeah, we can provide the board with a with a copy of that uh, of those. There's several of them that are very small, such as um, we needed new doors. For, for for our restrooms, they didn't meet code. We needed sprinkler systems in the ceiling that um, that we had to have installed in order to lay drywall. Um, okay. There, so some of these change orders are are obviously safety or code related change orders that we in, that we knew we would accrue throughout the project. Okay. Other change orders are um, as we indicated here with the CTE program mm -hmm. were associated Good with the spaces that were with the rent, with the remodel of that CTE course course because we. In the initial plans, we had a space okay. allocated for a course that we, could, we shouldn't offer, that we don't have any student interest in. We also had a nursing program that, that we're applying for that would not meet code You're not ready for, it, um, yeah. for, the, for the application. Therefore, the program would not be a, okay. available to offer. So in I the renovation of those spaces, we do accrue change orders. Now, there, are, there okay. were credits in those spaces that were already there for painting, you know, you know, for electronics. For, so when, <laughs> so when, you, when you make the change, they apply the credit, but then they also give you the change order for the difference right. associated with that. So some of these, um, there were no costs tacked on at the end of the project. What we're seeing now is the total cost of the project up to the bond being, up to the remainder of the bond being paid off. And, so and, there were no additional accrued change order, orders. We basically, through the course of the project, continued to process change orders that were associated and continue to pay, pay our bills. Okay, and, and okay. I, I understand that process, and, and I am not, um, I'm, I'm not sure what the right word is. I, I'm, not, I'm not criticizing in, in any way. I'm just inquiring. I understand. You know, it's not, oh, you didn't do something right. I want to know how we got there. That's, okay. that's all. So the $1.1 $1. $1 million, dollars, just road. to be clear, is additional, okay. is, are the remaining costs for the project that to, to pay all of our bills. Okay. Um, there, is no, there are no additional Things other than what we've presented tonight, there are minor change orders that may have been two thousand here, three thousand there. We have paid the bills monthly and have paid down the bond. But Once the bond is paid down, then we we, we come to you tonight to to uh, look at the at the dollars that were allocated to make the remaining payments so we can pay our bills. Right, but but there's but but there's got to be there, there's got to be some sort of list you have of all the things you need to have every, done. We can provide the board with a list of okay. every change order. We have every one documented okay. because we, had, we okay. disputed quite a few and, quite frankly, refused to pay quite a few. And again, um, So I'm, there are there is a okay. complete list of approved or, or change orders that are currently be in the process of being approved uh, okay. that we have accrued throughout the project. So now that we're at the end of the project, we, we can look a little further to see what the total cost will be based on what we, have, what we plan to approve in this project to get the work okay. done. I'm on your side. All I want to know is what is in that $1 million, how much, 
we had added to the project and change orders. Right. And How much was that? realistically, in a $25 million project, you're going to be 500000 over budget with everything. Realistically, that's not bad. But that, that's really not bad. I, I just uh, uh, was speaking to a superintendent today, and they were renovating their middle school for $20 million. And I was thinking, you know, Carolina okay. High School is much larger than a, than a middle school. So a $20 million renovation, again, um, is a, uh, it's bare bones with a lot of things. So you're going to include, some, and as you get into the walls, like the roof Mr. Honan mentioned, okay, uh, yeah. that, that was a change order. Dr. Parker, you can so, relax. I'm being clear I, I just, because I want to make sure everyone understands that there is no nefarious understand. intent on our part. We are trying to close out and build, build and finish a, a construction My project. questions are not geared to that. My questions are kind of simple. I just want to make sure when somebody asks me, I will be able to explain what happened and say, here's the list of what I have. Now, the other thing that people have asked me is really probably a $150 deal, but have you painted the, wall, the bricks? To make them look like they're the same building? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I, I was by there Saturday night, and I couldn't yeah, see it at night. It would be hard to tell in the dark, but if you go by there in the daytime, we, the uh, portion of the building between the existing... The, um, the existing bricks didn't match the new bricks right. in color. The, 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 that, was, that surrounded the auditorium right. from the addition over to the new gym. That's been, that's been stained. Does it look seen, like it's the same we, or close? We, we've received a number of positive comments about it. I've had everybody that's, that's commented... Right, you're the professional. Then, you're the professional. Does it look like it's the same? It it, it looks like it should be there. Okay. And, and we intend to do we intend to do the balance of the building this fall as as time as time and weather permits. That's if everything's approved. That uh, was paid by the uh, contract by the uh, <coughs> by the architect. As it should have been. As it should be. Okay. Um and and just 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 so we're mindful, the reason that existing brick was still on the front was because of the. Um, because we scaled back the project and did not expand the auditorium to the gym, which left that existing mm -hmm. brick there. Mm -hmm. uh, but since the architect had not made allowances for that existing brick being on the front of the uh, building, they took the responsibility of staining the front of the building. Thank you, gentlemen. I just need to know what's in this million dollars, and I'll be happy to help do you, with it. Do you, want to... you have it now? It's really just we have a price breakdown, but I want to make sure. Um, 500000 over contract is what you're looking for. Because if they have, they have five hundred thousand in their budget now, yeah, left yeah. over. Right. Five, Remember, they made about three hundred thousand on we, owner purchase material, and then with the interest and the total amount of the bond, they still are asking for five hundred and fifty from the anthem money. So I would assume that's yeah. what you're asking. It's not really what's in the million, but what's what's caused the over of the five fifty that you're looking for. Well, correct. I know the project was. 20, the budget for the project was $25 million. Those were the contracts. Right? I want to know why there was a penny over $25 million and an explanation for every penny over that. Correct. That's, that's what it Because that's what we have to give the citizens to say, this is what we did. As I said to you, that's a, that's a pretty close estimation mm -hmm. and, you know, not bad. But the, the only thing I'm saying is we have to figure out what went over, why, so we can explain it. Now, the bonus is this 156000 in interest, because you shouldn't be over even that much more if you got extra money for interest. Well, it was interest but and the 300000 they saved on owner purchase material gave them a 400 and gave a gave a Gave a taller ceiling than $25 million. Right, um, right. From, from owner purchase materials and, um, and, and the uh, interest. Yeah, you saved 300000 in owner purchase, right. stuff, and you got 156, so you almost got half right. a million. Right. Which is why good. we still have that balance of 500000 remaining. Okay. And when we add in the additional costs that we feel will close the project out, okay. based on the work that's currently being completed, that's where we get that, uh, that request for the, uh, for the, for the appropriation of those, of those contingency dollars for the project. I'm on your side. You just have to help, help me explain it. Okay. So did you want to answer that now or want to send that electronically? Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know how much detail he wants, but I mean, we have a full accounting of, of every change order in the process. Okay, if you can send me that, yes. Dr. Parker, if you can send me that electronically, yeah. that would yes, be great. Electronic now, too. keep in it's mind, fine. you have change orders that were approved, but, at, but we still have people working on the site. Um, people are still working, and, and I, I think they want to get paid. So, as, so we, the part of that money, those dollars we're anticipating, are construction subcontractor and uh, costs as well associated with the project.
you have to keep building. I mean, so it's not a, it's, it's as we paid the monthly bills and made the change, approved the change orders, it, that ceiling started increasing as of August 16th, August 2016. And, and okay. you know, like I said, I, I, I understand that part. I just need to be able to say, you know, school board saved this much money with self-purchases. They got this much extra money through interest, but they needed this much more money because of A, B, C, D. That, so. that would not be a problem. We okay. have those, those figures uh, for the board. Um, Thank you. Mr. Mr. Sealy? Yeah, I'd just like to see an accounting because we're actually a million over, not just 500,000. The way I'm adding this up, because the 300 plus 167 right. is another half a million plus a half million. So we're, we're at 26 million on the project, not just 25. So we're a million over budget, even though you're only asking for a half million. So you should have been under a half, but you're over a million. Well, continue again, continue. Uh, you have to add in the the uh, owner well, wait, I did the math. We, the you, you saved you saved so, a half a million, but you spent it. Right. So you're a million over on the project, even though you saved. I, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to face because when I see three something and one something, we'll call it a half. We'll call it a half a million, plus the additional half a million, which means we're a million dollars over on the project. I'd like to see the accounting for the whole million that we're over because even though you made the savings, you still spent it. Well, the bond is the bond still has five hundred and is it thirty two thousand? If I go back to that slide, go, could you go back to that slide, please? Five thirty two six four. Okay. So, and we're requesting in the uh, from from the anticipated funding four eighty seven six seventy seven seventy eight. Okay. So, with that being said, we still have five hundred thousand in the bond to pay down, and the anticipated overage. Will be four hundred eighty-seven thousand six seventy-seven, and we ask, we're asking for the five fifty five hundred and fifty thousand, uh, just to ensure that if there are any unanticipated costs or any additional change orders throughout the closure of the project, that we have funds available. So I don't think we're using the same. I, I, I don't. I understand what you're saying, but I, I don't. Beyond the bond, just to be just to be clear, beyond the bond, out of out of the additional contingency which was allocated for this project. For construction contingency, we are requesting four hundred eighty-seven thousand six hundred seventy-seven dollars for overage, but we want to pad that with five fifty to ensure that we have the dollars necessary to make to to pay our bills. Brian, how much is left project. in the account for the schools, according to your records? The, the amount that's left in our bond account is the five thirty-two. That number came from me. Now I'm I'm holding some bills that have not been paid, and which are included in the next number, which could be included in the next number. I just know in my little cash bond account there is five hundred thirty thousand, and that includes the interest that's been earned on the account. So that's everything. Yes, that's all including the I savings have. from the purchase. From the, yeah, that's so everything. That's everything. I understand that. I'm just what I'm trying to say is it's all in one number. I, I'd like to see the list, personally. That is not a problem. That is not a problem in terms of uh, flashing, fleshing out the I, one. I don't know that I can the additional prove more money than than we have in the bond account tonight, because we had an agreement when when we talked about the contingency fund, we would get a list and we'd get on that list and we'd make approvals. As you made, um, I, I beg to differ. I don't recall that agreement well, being made with the county. With the county, I did yeah, not. Was. I did not say we would provide a list uh, of of items for the county to pick off and approve. What we agreed to was to we came to the we came came to the county in January for a, an appropriation of one million dollars to be added to the construction of contingency. At that time, and that was at the suggestion of the board of supervisors. Um, so we so in that initial request, my our, in the written request to the board. It was a request to appropriate $1 million into the construction of contingency for anticipated overages that the school division may encounter so that we did not have to come to the county. No, 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 that's not what we did because that, I made the motion. Let, me, let me finish, no, sir. No, 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 no. That is not what we did. No, no, no. You made the motion, but I, made the I, motion I didn't finish. With Mark. nobody could spend the money. Wait a minute. I'm going to finish because I made the motion. I know it was made. I made the motion that there was a $1 million contingent. 
that the board couldn't spend and the school board couldn't spend until there was until there was an estimate and a written request for those funds to be spent. I made the motion. Actually, I, I, I beg to differ. Mrs. Um, Mrs. Long made the motion, and the motion was at Mr. Culley's suggestion that we, uh, that we allocate $1 million into contingency. You gave a question and asked could those monies be held in the county's coffers if they are allocated. Mrs. Long made the motion, and the board approved. At the, at, Mr. Culley, and I just want to be clear on, on what on, on, well, hold on. leaving let's that just, meeting. Let's, 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 let's clear this up, Mr. Kelly. We appropriated at that meeting six hundred thousand twenty-eight dollars, twenty-eight thousand six twenty-eight. We allocated a million to contingency, and I explained that it was not appropriated. That, that neither one of us, the schools or the county, could spend it till it was appropriated. I didn't see in the video that we said that he had to. Sp made a list, but it wasn't appropriated, which means it couldn't be spent. It was just put to be held to, and what was said was held to the end of the project to make sure there weren't any unforeseen cost overruns that we didn't know about. And they, that, that was the gist that of it. Was it the, was not that was the agreement. So they couldn't spend it. That was the agreement it. that we, that, that I, as my understanding. They technically haven't spent it, but they have obligated it. Now, with that, we, we, we built the school. Right, right. And uh, at this particular point, we continue to pay our bills and submit them to the county monthly since January. The, the bond was, pay, was being paid down. If the bond was paid down in March or April, then we would have had to come to the county earlier to ask for the appropriation of the funds so we could pay our bills. We are at the end of the project, which is what we indicated that night, and I am here giving an accounting of the spending and the and the amount of that we would need to pay out of the contingency. In my opinion, I'm doing exactly what this board asked me to do. Okay, but you're saying, because the real genesis of this contingency money and the million and whatever is the money from your health insurance yes, that's sir. being yeah. refunded yeah. back to the county. Yes, sir. We initially so, asked for an appropriation, okay, okay. but it was, in, Slow down, it Dr. was Dr. allocated. Slow down, Dr. Parker. Because... You had money, the school board had money in their health insurance program that they're going to use for capital projects. So you put that money into the capital project pot with the understanding it would be approved by both boards together when the project was over. Yes, sir. That's and, what and, you're saying. Yes, sir. That's, that's all that we is, need to That is my recollection of that's our That's all we need to, we're just trying to clear that up. The original and what I said was you weren't here when we set the first contingency is because you weren't. That was done under the previous superintendent. So that original contingency that we said should be little or nothing was little or nothing. <laughs> Your contingency, and I needed to do that because, well, I had trust issues. But the reality <laughs> is I don't have trust issues now. I just need to make sure we're clear, and that's what everybody needs to be clear about. We're discussing your money yes. that came back to the county. Yes, sir. And the issue is, how do you spend your money? Yes, sir. Like, my question was, I need to explain to people how you spent your money. That's, that's, that's just a fine. list. I'm finished. I'm going to let everybody else go on, because I think we're at an understanding now. <coughs> yeah. Mr. Mr. Seeley. Have we resolved the boilers for the middle school issue yet? Yes, sir. With the... Uh, with the uh, appropriation of these funds, we will still have 400 and probably still close to $500,000, which, according to our agreement in January, at the end of the project, I would come back with a list of capital improvement items, and the, uh, re the conversion of the boilers at, at Caroline Middle School will be part of that appropriation request for capital improvement needs of the school division. I'm back to my same comment. We agreed there'd be a list. Of capital improvement capital, needs. Which, that's where that's where I think you, your no, list comes from. But we're still, I'm still at the, I'm still at the list over the 25 million. We can provide that, but that was not in our agreement to come and give you a list to check off and tell tell what we could spend off of the project. If we had done that, guys, I'll be honest. If we had done that, when and when Mr. Whiteman comes and said we need sprinklers or a fire alarm, we, everything we would have processed at a change order, we would have had to come here and explain to this board. That was not my agreement of, our, of, of what, we, what we spoke to in January. What we spoke to is setting money aside in the contingency that we wouldn't touch until that bond is spent down. 
and then we would come, make an appropriate um, request the amount we needed to close the project out, and give you a detailed list of spending for the capital improvement. That was the agreement that I that I left with. That was my interpretation of everything that we discussed that night. Mr. Mr. Whiteman. Sprinklers and fire alarms were part of the original plan. That was plan reviewed, part of the original plan. So me saying sprinklers and fire alarms, that was in the original approval. None, none of that changed. What I'm referring to, Mr. Whiteman, is not every change order that we made was a was a owner requested change order. Some of the change orders were a result of code or safety. Related issues. I want to clarify sprinklers okay. and fire okay, but alarms. Can you answer, can you, <laughs> can you clarify that? And you, okay. but do you agree with my statement? Now, okay, okay. To, to, um, <laughs> Dr. Parker, on your statement that you just said, some of your change orders were code requirements. Uh, code. They were either code or uh, safety-related requirements. Okay. Um, good we, example. You, sh you should not have to pay for any some change were, orders that were code requirements. Yeah. Your architect. And trust me, I spent a lot of nights in school learning that. Your architect is responsible for that. We made, so a, we made if, quite a few, um, we did not fight quite a few change requirements, but, change order requirements as a result of that. All right. Um, but I, they, I, those I want are you the to be things just that as tenacious that we have as you are with us now project. with your architect. Because if you had to change anything, you had the right to make the architect pay for it. That's professional practice 101. Okay? If, if he left something out, and you're paying for it, you need to get that money back, and I hope you haven't paid him his last payment. No, we have not. Okay. Then, then and that's we, part and of... We still have quite some, some change orders to, to dispute, but they, that process has been ongoing since August. We've had okay. several that we've had to debate. But, I think I've even conferred with Kevin several times on some change orders um, because we know that uh, in, in the course of building, you'll run across something that, uh, that, that you'll have to either not pay for or split the cost uh, depending on what's needed to build. I'm just telling you, I took professional practice, I have a degree in architecture, I was warned many times that the architect is responsible for things like that. Okay. So if the architect left you hanging, you need to pass that cost back to him. Yeah. To my knowledge, I'm not aware of any, but... But if you say anything, you, any yeah. change you made because of code is his fault. Yeah. So if you, made, if you change the light bulb because of code, he should buy that light bulb. We will go back and check on that. That's the law. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Underwood. Thank you. Dr. Parker, I just have one question. Um, I know you guys are still reconciling, closing out. This project is not closed. Based on your projections, total cost of the project will look like what? Total cost. Total cost will be in, uh, the addition of that 487, 677, 68. We're anticipating these are final figures here. Right. What's that? The so four, that be 487, the, 677 plus the 156 they earned in interest plus so the, right. the three and some 300 and some thousand they saved in owner purchase material. Okay. That was all So it was $26 million project. It's twenty-six million dollars. So it's a million dollar six twenty-six million dollar project is what I want to hear right I want to I want to know the total okay. estimated cost of the project okay. know that they've um, saved they have some funding they have that, right? By, right that's included in that cost. So if you had 20 million, but and then go in the question the again I think the, the big question is of those change orders what of, of those change orders what are calls or change orders that we requested that cause overrun versus change orders that were necessary because of code or upgrade to the project? I think that's the question. I don't think we're questioning spending the, the funds. I think we need to look at how those came about. And we there we there are probably at least... Just from just since January, how many, uh, about 90 change orders? How many change orders would right. you say? I mean, there are a ton of change orders over right. the course of this project. It's a two-year project. Right. So, so I mean, so if, you go back, if you're going to go back to change orders, you have to go back to August 2016 and look at every change order that was approved in this project. Um, so that's, we're not looking at a set period of time. We're looking at the, the, 
the, the spin down of the bond. So that's why, why I said it's not a um, it's not a period that we're that we're referring to but, where. But Dr. Parker, I, w I want to say this to you: the, the bond was 25 million. Mm -hmm. We're going to spend 26 million. Right. Correct. With uh, with 130. 158, if you go back to that previous uh -huh. slide, in interest, uh, I'm, and I'm not, 317 I'm not, I'm not, in, in owner-purchase materials. I'm not breaking then anything. Then what's over right. that is what we are spending over the bond. I'm not breaking bond, anything down yet. Okay. I'm saying the cost of the project is $26 million. Granted, you've put some additional funding in because of buying right. the uh, materials and because of interest. Right. I understand that. That's right. That's just for, which is not bad. So we're just saying that we should be able to reconcile that. We can. And we can. And that's, can. And that's it. I think okay. the fact that you earned half a million through other savings and you spent it, I don't really care. I think you should. So that's not an issue. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. All right. Um, Mrs. Long. Dr. Parker. On our two-on-two -two meeting, there was a discrepancy in the two accountings, and the accountants were going to work together. How far apart are we now? We're, we're in good. Sh we're, we should be in good shape. Uh, they're still reconciling some some items, but I think there may be uh, some accounting some accounting uh, items that that will significantly bring down our expenditures. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't have a final. I don't have a final resolution to to report out on that, but I know Mr. Martin has been in good communication with the county regarding that. Okay. My, my concern is Gentlemen. there are always people that you get bills late. You go to the doctor, you can be home for six months, and then you get bills. I have concern that without the letters from your different companies stating that this is a final bill, that your figures could be off and we'd be go over what you have to spend. Reassure me that is not the case because you're not getting any more of taxpayers' Thank money. You. We, we know where the bond is. We asked for the uh, bottom number there, for 550, just in case there are some uh, some ancillary costs that were associated uh, that that we're not that are not anticipated. Uh, we do not we hopefully do not exceed expect to come back for an additional appropriation regarding the construction project. Uh, what we hope to do is come back in October to start discussing uh, further capital improvement needs of the school division which is what we had, had uh, discussed in January. Dr. Parker, my only, and I, and I know and I agree with Mr. Thomas on some of the stuff, some of the stuff happened um, before you were here. Um, one of the things we had a discussion um, at one of the board meetings when you were here, usually a contingency on a $25 million project, 10%, 5%, um, and we're, that, that, I saw a contingency of 250000 which is about 1%. Um, that going forward that can't happen we have to have a contingency in any school funding whether we're here or whoever there, there needs to be an allocation of a contingency fund that's set aside for overruns of, of the 10 percent um, and we're also very very and we'll, we'll make sure of that then the other thing too that we, we uh, we're, you're, you're very lucky that insurance money is there because if that insurance money you weren't able to use that insurance money would have some would have some serious I mean we wouldn't be able to cover it I mean that, that one million dollars is, is key to that to this project you know, so I mean, that's why the contingency fund is, is something that is definitely needed going into the beginning of the project because you're going to have overruns on a 25 million dollar project. Having one percent to, to play with is is just it's just nuts. So um, going forward in in future projects, I think we need to make sure that the, the proper contingency is there because I think that would have avoided a lot of this stuff that we're talking about tonight. And I'm not I'm not saying that's I'm not saying that's your fault at all. I'm not. No, I think that's sage advice. I, I I do believe just just like Ms. Uh, it was mentioned by Mr. Thomas that 4% over um, would, would have been roughly around what you're saying in terms of contingency. Um, I think future bills, if, we have, if we're in this position to build another facility in the future, I think that's something that we all need to consider. I think, Mr. Mr. Black, you make a good point, but um, historical performance was what determined the lack of a contingency fund. I don't think I need to say any more because yeah. you were here. Okay. Is there anything? Anything yeah, else? I guess do we do we we need a motion? I'm not prepared to do anything until I see the list of bills. So do we want a table. 
I'd like to table this until we, Mr. Thomas has even asked for the list of overages so that we could see them. Is that a consensus of the board to table I, until? I, I, I asked first. First, is there an issue? Are you going to be in trouble if you don't pay your bills in two weeks? Well, what will happen in October is we will have a, we will, may not be able to move a bill, depending on the amount of the bills, we may not be able to move a, uh, bills to the board, school board for approval, uh, which would delay the closeout of the, pro, of the project. What we can do is give, we definitely will submit the, uh, the uh, change orders to Mr. Cully and anticipated costs. I think the initial request was what is in the anticipated $1,020,000 uh, uh, and 341 dollars and 71 cents. I think we can give a full accounting of that uh, figure right there when the remaining ancillary cost of the uh, anticipated remaining cost of the project, which impacts the, re the appropriation request that we're asking. We'll be happy to provide that number. We provide bills to the school, to the county on, on a monthly basis. So Mr. Cully has our, the bills that were submitted. Uh, they, have, they have a record of the bills that were paid. Um, that's not something that the school division should have to dig up, but if we, will, we will if that's the will of this board. Kind of, kind of simple yes or no, is it, is it going to cause you any financial hardship to wait until our first meeting in October? We meet the day before the Board of Supervisors. I would say that uh, we can only bring $532,664.03 to the board for, for bills. If we have any dollars exceeding that, it delays our ability to pay our vendors and our contra contractor and, and, and architect which is why we're here tonight. But you would be able to present, if you had a million dollars worth of bills, you would be able to present all of that to the school board on October, whatever the day is. Yes, sir. If we go and back to Mr. Honan's timeline. Wait, wait, wait. Just, just let me do it because I'm going to try to do it quick. If you, could, if you could present to the school board all of your bills the day before our meeting and get authority, even though you didn't have the money to have all of those approved, we could then the next day say, yes, we approve all of these. Yes, sir, you could do that. Okay. If that's the will of this board, you could do that. And, Mr. Cully, would that be appropriate? Because I don't want to speak out of turn. I mean, if the board's willing to do that, we certainly can get it to them. We, we meet a week late. I don't know whether you're considering our, our meeting. It was moved. Mm -hmm. So oh, we'll, right. we'll be meeting on the uh, 17th. Does that, how does that impact I forgot your that. submission of bills to the county? And right. Yeah, all they, what they need to, what they, sh what the school board should do, if you don't mind my suggesting it, would be at the school board's meeting, present all the bills that you want them, the school board to approve payment for, and and have them approve it, subject to receiving funding and approval from this board when it meets, and then it, it will delay you until the 17th, but right. not after that. So, so you're meeting they, twice in October or, or once in October? I just need just clarification. Because if you go back to the timeline, I think we close out the project October 31st. Do we? So we would still have November? That, that would be fine. Okay. So, okay. So, all right. Okay. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. Uh, Mr. Whiteman. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to clarify, and I have three examples that Doc Parker was talking about, about code compliancy. The first one, um, plans went out for bid for both Madison and the high school. And after the plans went out, uh, the architect asked me to do a walkthrough with them. And one example is on the second floor of the high school. I got a chair, I climbed up, pulled up the ceiling tile, and the walls did not go to the roof deck. They were actually 18 inches, two foot short. By code, they got to go to the roof deck. So where that goes, and in and, and, and Doc Parker's defense, Second one being the bathrooms at the high school. On the plans, they were ADA accessible. Well, no one changed the doors. You've got to have a 3-0 door. So you've got handicapped stalls, but you've got a 2-8 door. It doesn't work. So that was one of the changes. The third one I can think of is over at Madison, the different roof heights from the addition to the old school. Code requires a parapet. And on the plans, it says built to code. So when we review it, okay, it's going to be built to code. Well, when we get over there, there was no parapet, so then code required it to be fire rated X amount of feet over, and so they had to go back and treat that. All of those, like I'm with Floyd, uh, that's the architect's responsibility. Code's code. So that's the 
clarification what Doc's talking about. The sprinklers and the fire alarm were in the original plant. Okay, we got you. You're on, you're uh, on record you. with that. Thank you. All right, Dr. Parker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm up on deck for one more item. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Holmes. Uh, Dr. Parker, okay. Yep. Okay, Dr. Parker, uh, C. Okay, item C on the agenda, uh, Mr. Chairman Black, Chair, Vice Chair Long, members of the board. Uh, I bring to you tonight a request from the Caroline County School Board for the appropriation of the remaining uh, Anthem uh, escrow funds from the expired Anthem claims account in the amount of $355,992.79 plus any accrued interest on that, uh, on that account. Uh, in 2015, the school division joined local choice for both health and dental coverage for employees. Because the school division was self-insured prior to joining local choice, the division was required to maintain an escrow claims account with both Delta Dental and Anthem. These accounts are no longer necessary. After the closing of both accounts, a balance of $353,000 and $353,000 remained in escrow until September 2017 to pay out any remaining claims under the previous insurance policy. Since that time, the account has accrued interest, which is reflected in the requested amount. We ask that upon approval of this request, the school division's FY18 operational budget be amended to reflect the, appropriate, uh, the appropriation uh, increase in revenue to support the below spending plan, which was approved by the school board on September 11, 2017. Um, you should have a copy of the spending plan that's associated with that uh, appropriation request. Um, and uh, I will just quickly, I gave a quick summary of each one of those items, but for the sake of the public, I'll go in and share a little bit about the, each one of those. Uh, completion of a salary and classification study for school division employees not to exceed $30,000. Um, we have uh, had success with the initial staining of the front of the facility at the, at the high school with the, the architect paid for that. However, there has been discussion about the, uh, since it is, we will not build a high school anytime soon, I, I, I predict, uh, with matching the remaining brick on the high school, existing brick with the, with the project. It, it'll lead to a better uh, finished product. And if it's a 30-year building, um, after this renovation, uh, I think it's in our best interest to do so at the low cost of, uh, that's, that's listed. Um, the purchase of classroom technology for, uh, for existing classrooms, we, uh, as Mr. Honan indicated, we increased our classrooms by 14 additional classrooms, and we also have associated spaces that need uh, technology as well. Uh, anticipated, uh, we anticipate that there will be an increase in health insurance. We've kind of dodged the bullet the last two years with uh, very low increases in health in health, uh, uh, healthcare expenses, but we do anticipate that there will be a significant increase this year and we'd like to set aside some dollars for that uh, anticipated increase, which will allow us to work a little bit closer together during budget season. Uh, and then the final amount is any remaining funds we would like to put into the uh, school uh, rainy day fund for any anticipated emergencies uh, that, would, uh, that would impact the operational budget or capital improvement budget. So, so. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to see this go on a regular agenda item at the at a regular meeting rather than on presentations. Will the rest of the board? No, it's on presentations. We, we grouped it together because they already had all the other things, and so they were already here. I I'm just sorry. thought this we was a presentation. I had no idea that we were. No, it's all grouped it together. I, th I think it was in the memo, but anyway, I'm sorry for the confusion. We just put them all together because of they had so many. I thought this was informational. This is just I, guess the, uh, I guess the question goes back to Dr. Parker, goes back to the same question we just asked you. If we were to delay this as a regular board item until the next meeting, would that impact you in any way? Well, I think what will happen is they'll send the check because they're not going to be our banker. Um, so they will send the check. Um, and that we will subsequently turn that check over to the county and uh, request the appropriation of it. So we could do this at a later time. Um, okay. 
it doesn't it doesn't stop the close out of that of that uh, right. account right. in any way shape or form uh, we just knew that it, it would close out in September which is why I'm here tonight before you okay so put this on the agenda yeah put this on the agenda for the uh, October whatever meeting but now the reality is this is this is again all the school board's money from from anthem so right. theoretically we would we would be reappropriating reappropriating their money for whatever purpose they had anyhow. I do have one concern that I would like to make, make a, apparent. We wanted to do the salary study to have that information available during budget season. The only problem with delaying that, that decision would delay any, any uh, bids going out or any, um, any procedural items associated with that, which would mean that we may not get the findings back from that salary study, which is what we're investing in, until maybe in later forms, possibly as late as February or March. I guess my one concern this is you have two hundred thousand dollars in here for health care expense. This is one time money. So next year in your budget you won't have this money, this two hundred thousand, and so you're gonna be short because you're using it for a health care expense, right. which is a continuing expense from one time funds. And we and we are aware of that. Uh what we do understand is that when the health care costs go up we have no choice but to but to pay it. Uh, our options would be to pass those uh, that cost off to our employees or to the county. Um, so we anticipate there will be an increase um, in health care. Uh, we, we, we know that that's going that's go, that, that's to happen in the foreseeable future, uh, but at least it gives us an opportunity not only to match or uh, pay for the bulk of that, uh, but also to plan for, for, for future costs. But it, and sometimes there is a reduction. It's not always it's, a continued increase. Sometimes there is a reduction. So My concern is this is, one time, this is a one-time refund. This is going to show up in your operation budget for health care. And then the next year you're going to come and go, you know, we're short 200000 because last year we had carryover money from our Anthem coverage from the year before. Well, now we're not requesting, we're not, we're, well, yeah, yeah. I understand. I, I'm with it, you. It's being used I'm with you, Mr. Healthcare. Sealy. I'm with you. It's not going to be used this year. I think I need to amend my request. What we're anticipating is to put that money into a county account to compensate for the FY19 health care insurance. So you are, you are exactly correct. That, that is not money that we want to put into our FY18 operational budget. I'm just making sure because we're all going to get stuck short with this because it's going to be 200000 that's not going to be available again. And, you know, we'll have a different figure in, to, in, in FY20 on what health care will be. So we'll just have to um, deal with it accordingly during that time. Uh, we don't we, we don't have any idea what the health care expenses will be it might be a decrease we may get some good news so Mr. Collins. <laughs> if, let's, let's if, hope it's better than what Washington we, is doing now right okay? if we're going to appropriate um, based on them uh, wanting to do the salary study I would certainly recommend at least appropriate that so we can get started on that so we could get it some of the information hopefully back yeah. given the fact that how long ours took I, I understand Stan wanting to start as soon as possible so if you're going to do it in, in August I mean October 17th I would I, that money I think he really could use I'm not sure the other is time sensitive uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman Mr. it would be appropriate I, I would move that, that we at least put the $30,000 in for a salary study right now I'll second motion? that no, we have a motion and a second for the salary study is there any discussion on the motion yes Mr. Chairman um, with, with all due respect to my, my colleagues, um, this is money that um, is coming back to them. We're going to reappropriate it to them anyway. So, so why are we prolonging this or hitting, volleying this ball back and forth when the bulk of the money, the 200, is not going to be spent, as, he, as indicated, in the budget? We're going to approve it anyway because that's what we said we would do when money comes back to the board, we give it back to the school. So, the fact that we so why would we sit here and, and volley with thirty thousand when the reality of it is we're going to give it to them anyway? Yeah, Mr. Collar. The one thing we did tell them when the anthem started and started in the two on two and beyond was that it would be for one time capital. So we did say that we didn't really want it going in their operating budget because then once we spent it one time, it would be it would, gone, right. and then they'd be looking at us for that to make right. that up. But the other parts of the list, obviously, I don't have any issue with at all. I do have some concern about, you know, but right now he's just wanting to hold it 
for that, but I don't know whether ultimately we're going to put that there or not, or whether it will ultimately be better buying, you know, some other capital thing with it. But that's something certainly the board would have to decide. But that was the sort of the agreement we had, one-time capital purchases for this money. You finish up the projects at the school, you know, the, the current capital, and any other capital needs that may be out there, furniture or all, any, any of those type of things that they may have needed. needed. Is, is the board Ms. Mr. Thomas, or do you want to still continue with that motion, or do you want to include everything except the insurance money? Oh, it was. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was Mr. It was, no, Mr. Thomas. Uh, I, I don't. I don't have a problem in including everything they they want to have here. Um, it's their money. We're going to give it back to them anyhow. Why? But it should be for one time. The two hundred thousand is particular because it's it's going to go to a continuing expense. I will amend my motion. To appropriate every penny of the three hundred and fifty five thousand nine hundred ninety two dollars and seventy nine cents that belongs to the school board that is not earmarked for a recurring expense. Okay. I have a, okay. Motion, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Could could I have a question clarifying question before the board votes? So next year when we go into negotiations on 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 the this FY nineteen budget. And we present our presentation and tell you that health care expenses have increased by six, seven, eight percent for the FY for FY19. Um, what happens then? Are we going to say that money that is, falls on the school division, or I mean, it's we want to help. I see what you're saying. We want to, <laughs> we want to, whatever way you want to do it, we want to help. You're, what you're compensate for the increase in cost. So, yeah. I, so I, I just want to make sure, and we can do, I want, whatever way we do it, that, that's the purpose. The next year, there'll be a different figure for health care that, we'll that we'll all have to deal with. However, we felt it was the board, felt it was appropriate to set aside additional funds to work with the county you want to, make to a compensate ahead of for, time. The, for the cost in that budget. So whatever way, I, that's my recommendation. I know it's, a, I know it's not a Health care is going to be recurring every year, but we do not have a figure that he of, of what health, and we are not guaranteed that health care will continue to increase. Yeah, um, so, but so we're just talking about working with the county for budget purposes in FY19. All you're saying is you're, you're just going to make a contribution from out of your money that you were going to have to help defray the cost next year. Yes, sir. And we're saying we don't want you to do that. You're saying you don't want our money. So right. Make that check out to me, and I'll be happy <laughs> to take care of it. Um, call the question, please, Mr. Chairman. Is his 200000 going to be there for 19, whether we vote on it today or, or next year this time? But right it's now the motion says the motion. non reoccurring. Not reoccurring. That number would be $155,992.79. Dr. Parker. Ma'am. We approve this whole thing, and when the accountants finally get things going, and you've got that those letters stating you don't owe us any more money, everything is paid for. If we are two hundred thousand dollars short, can we come back to that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Cully has assured me uh, in, in conversations that after every appropriation moving forward, we will have a detailed conversation and letter in writing specifying specifically what accounts and how that those dollars will be will be spent. So that the school division wanted... and the county have a full are on the same page as far as expenditures and and uh, and dollars. Okay. And just revenue. so that is flexible, just in case we go over budget, it happens. All right. Thank you. Well, it hasn't. It, hopefully, it, it will never happen. I've been here when it did. So, uh, because we're we're I mean we've got a full agenda to left to go. I mean I think we've appreciate you being up here, Dr. Parker. So what is what is the will of the board on the motion right now? Call the question. I, I, the question is called. <laughs> so the motion, everything except the reoccurring cost, correct? correct? That's the motion and the second. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. All right, let's go to, believe it or not, well, let's go to appointments, Fort Royal and Western Carolina. You've got two more. Uh, um, appointments. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to postpone my appointment. Next month, please. Yeah. Um, I will also postpone postpone mine until October. I didn't know. All right. So then we move on to so number two, agenda item number two is done. 
Number three, consent. Is there anything that anyone would like to pull from consent agenda? Hearing none, could I get a motion to approve consent A, B, C, D, and E? So move, Mr. Chairman. Can I have a second? second? I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. We are going to take a um, we are okay. going to take a 10-minute Earth time, 12-minute um, 12 Earth time um, recess, and we'll be back at 8 o'clock. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have everyone back. Let's go ahead and reconvene the um, September 26, 2017 Board of Supervisors meeting. Um, I'm sorry we're running late. Um, it is now time for public comments. If someone would like to discuss anything that is related, um, well, anything basically, um, please come down at this time. You have three minutes. We are at public comment time. Is there anyone who would like to discuss any, anything during public comment? Good evening, everyone. My name is George Spinner. I'm a member. I live in the Mattapanai District. The reason why I've come and approached you tonight is because I'd like to talk about the possibility of getting some lighting on Ruther Glen Road near the uh, the entrance road to going to the uh, I believe it's now Love's um, truck stop. Um, a lot of times, and, and also probably banning trucks from going down Ruther Glen Road. Um, I've had encounters quite, quite a bit. I travel Ruther Glen Road at least three times a week up and back. And uh, I've had quite a few occasions where I've seen 18-wheelers coming down that road. And that road is not set up for 18-wheelers. It's very curvy. It's also very hilly. And last week I encountered one where I actually had to pull off to the side of the road and there really wasn't too much space for me to pull over because an 18-wheeler coming towards me was over the double yellow lines because of the curves in the road. Um, many times these track, these 18 wheelers are missing the turn that to, to take them into the uh, Love's uh, truck stop. And once they miss that, there's no place for them to go to turn around except going all the way down to Signboard Road, then going down Signboard to 30 and then down 30 to 95 and then back up if they still want to go to that same truck stop. And uh, there's no lighting there at night, and this has usually occurred at night. And there's no, there's, there's no lighting there to indicate that there's a road or anything. And I think sometimes the, the, the truckers just miss, miss that road because it's so dark. I mean, when they, when they developed that whole loop system there and, and changed the, the traffic patterns, why they didn't put some lighting up there so that intersection is more visible, I don't understand. I talked a while back to a uh, uh, manager at the Loves who said they would be willing to uh, you know, help with the cost of, of that just simply because it would help their business. And uh, when I approached, um, I think I spoke to Mr. Nelson about it. I may not have, but I spoke to somebody and mentioned that. And they just said, no, they weren't going to approve any lighting for that area. Um, I think it could be very dangerous. In fact, somebody hasn't been hurt already in that on that road with tractor with 18 wheelers going up and down it just really amazes me um, I think Mr. Underwood can understand what I'm talking about um, since he lives in that area and um, I was just wondering if it's something you might you know kind of have some consideration for maybe talk about a little bit and see about just just getting some lighting at that intersection because it is a very dark intersection I'm also sure that maybe sometimes there are travelers who try to use that back road and miss it also because there's no lighting there. You, at night you can't really see that intersection very well. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to discuss any matter in front of the board? Is there anyone else who would like to discuss any matter of county business? Okay, so I'll declare the public comment period closed. We will now go on to unfinished business, um, which is the further discussion of the results of the employee classification and compensation study. I think the, um, at the last meeting we had talked about, the board had talked about wanting time to uh, digest some of the information that was brought in front of us by Springstead. 
What is the um, what is the will of the board? Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, I want everyone employee-wise to understand that last meeting was the first time we had seen that study. So we needed to have some time to look at it. Uh, and I think we all have looked at it. And for me, my motion that I would make would be to approve uh, the following actions uh, as recommended by the Employee Classification and Compensation Study uh, that was recently completed by Springstead. Uh, first, I would move that we approve the recommenda recommended new salary scale and title range schematic for full-time and part-time employees that we would approve the recommended new salary scale for fire, uh, for the Department of Fire and Rescue field personnel, and thirdly approve pay raises for current full-time and part-time employees based on the years of service and 15-year midpoint rules recommended by the study, and that the effective date of these actions should be September the 1st, 2017. Second. A motion and a second. Um, any discussion on the motion? Yeah, discussion. Just to make sure I understand the scope of the, of the motion. The original report said it would cost us seven hundred thousand dollars to implement the entire salary study for the year, right? No. Uh, one million one hundred thousand, I think, is a closer estimate of, of the. In part time, it's hard to gauge totally, but wasn't the number he used in the PowerPoint seven hundred and seventy thousand? I know it's kind of hard to listen to, but I don't think so. Uh, anybody got the, the actual detail in front of me? It's 1.1 million. And then, how much is it for 9-1? We had an estimate for that. Just to clarify, the the total cost to implement is one million eighty-eight thousand one hundred forty-five dollars and forty-nine cents. That's where a, that's where a full year. Yes, yes, sir. So from one September, Mr. Pardon, I know you want your chair back. Ninety thousand a month. Yes, two twelfths less, or one six less, or my batting average one sixty seven. One sixty seven. I knew that one well. Here's my concern. My 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 concern is that there was um, had this study had this study been completed on time, we would have been bringing this up three months ago, and um, for various reasons, the study got delayed. And I, I believe the county employees, um, I believe the county employees had a memo that said it would be July 1st. And I understand that we're the Board of Supervisors and we can implement it, we can implement it next year if we want. I mean, I understand we have that power. I just think if, if there was something went out or if there was a, a belief that it's July 1st, that we need to, that we need to do that. But Mr. If, Black, if, we if, didn't if, see the final, we wouldn't have had the final numbers for the county until last meeting anyway. So we would have, we would have operated with the $500,000 and probably would have done half of the, half of the raises this year and half next year. And with this, we can do the full raise and make it retroactive to one September, which gives everybody a month's, I mean, because the bottom line is we only budgeted a half a million dollars and we're spending 900000 So from that perspective, we, can, we now know that we, we actually had a pretty good year. We can actually do the entire raise, make it retroactive to 1 September, and try to meet everybody in the middle because we're still uh, $400,000 behind the line for this year from what we had for allocated funds for the pay raise because it was only half a million. I'm just trying to strike a good position for everybody because we're still, we've still got to come up with the money next year in the budget, another 700000 because we only had a half a million. It's roughly 1.1. I guess it's, it's 600000 for next year, not seven. But 
we, we still have to find those funds in next year's budget. So I'm just trying to strike a happy medium with everybody and do the full raise right up front right now and make it retroactive to 1 September. No one, and we didn't know what the fund balance really was until last, until last meeting. That's correct. So that was, that, that was my rationale right. for and, and how we get there. I guess so. Just wanted to clarify my question, and I can answer it myself. The number was 793 for employees below grade and 286 for employees at grade. So I, I thought 700 stuck in my head. It was 1.088 for everybody for a whole year. And that would cost us 1.08 next year if everything stays the same. But, but what it sounds like is similar to what happens with the school teachers. We get them all on grade, and then we may or may not be able to keep them going. So I hate to say we'd love to give everybody a raise now and keep them going, but the reality is it's really not possible to keep them going. The study includes some mechanisms to try to help keep everybody on grade. So those are in the written verbiage of that. And so we'll work toward trying to figure out a way to implement that. It may not be in 19, but maybe by 20 we'll be able to start trying to implement that because, of course, for 19, we'd be trying to find the other 600,000 if you right. implement this now. So obviously, we wouldn't be coming back wanting a lot. But I think by the 20 budget, we'd be certainly looking to try to follow the Springstead recommendations to try not to get too far behind um, so that we can you know, basically move people along. So that you, And the main reason for that is to try to avoid compression so that as people leave and new people come, they're not making the exact same thing that somebody's been here two or three or four or five years and suddenly... Uh, especially in those departments where we have a lot of folks doing the same job, deputies and firefighters and things, uh, th that uh, we won't have people making the same money as people that have given us two and three, four years' worth of service. So we, we certainly want to try to bring that forward. It wouldn't be next, next budget. Next budget, we'll obviously be looking for the match for the remainder of the study. Sure. Seven, 793 for employees. Yes, the other thing grade. I want to make clear to everybody is, is the memo that said July we were not aware oh, of. The total um, so we're trying to do the best we can with the budget we have for this year so we can move forward to next year. Uh, and as Mr. Seeley says, I think that sort of meets us in the middle. Yeah. That's pretty fast. Uh, motion or second? Okay, okay there, is, there is a motion and a... So again, your, your motion is basically implement the salary study you did differentiate fire and sheriff, but they were all included in that one million number we had, Correct. along with every other county employee. Correct. It includes everybody. The, the reason that motion is written that way is because uh, some of those uh, groups are on different uh, right. grades, and, and their hours are different than you know, the fire department, and they work a, a different set of hours. So we're just making sure we cover everything. But it's this full study as, uh, as recommended by Springstead with basically two rules. For years of service in your department, you get a half a percent raise. You're either put at the minimum or where you currently, your salary is if you're above minimum with that years of service, half a percent. And then if you've been here 15 years in your job, you're at least at midpoint. And there was five employees that were not at midpoint with 15 plus years of service. And so that's, those are the two rules all, all the same. And for the part-time employees, they were getting there at 750 now and the lowest pay scale will be $10, so we're effectively saying our, our minimum wage in Caroline is now $10 an hour. That is correct. For, for Caroline County? For the, the, yeah, for any job that we Caroline currently County have. Employees. Employees. Caroline employees. Right. No, not for private business, but for any of our employees, that would be. Yeah, I mean, we could, we could do that for private businesses, but we have no authority. So we have a... We have a, we have a motion and a second. I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm going to vote no. And my only reason is voting no is because of the fact that I believe it should be July 1. Um, and so that's my no vote. It means I'm happy for you guys. It's probably going to go September 1st. Um, but I'm happy for you guys. So um, there is a, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I am opposed. Please make sure that's noted as why I'm opposed. Motion carries 5 to 1. 4 to 1. 4 to 1. 4 to 1. Mr. Forehand is not here. 
All right, let's move on to the um, uh, new business, uh, which is a proposed resolution in opposition to Aqua Virginia water rate and sewer rate increase. Um, you have in front of you a um, you have in front of you the proposed rates. Um, I could go into um, I could go into a lot of detail. You also got a handout on the cost uh, of uh, fully fighting this. Um, this increase, um, which um, you should have had um, put on your desk. I know we got a lot of different handouts. Should be should have been put on your desk at some point. Okay. And then the resolution. We don't have to talk about resolution. All right. Um, as you can see, there are the uh, there are the rates. Um, that they are proposing. Um, in addition, just to give a little background, they're proposing two things, and um, one of them we defeated last time, which was what they call a WWISC, um, Water Wastewater Infrastructure Surcharge. Um, it was defeated. That was our big victory in the one two years ago. Um, and that was, I think, one of the first times Aqua actually lost. Uh, shortly after our victory, um, another private water company called American Water um, filed for the same WWASC up in Northern Virginia, I believe it was Alexandria, Arlington, and the, the legislature of the state of Virginia granted them a temporary, um, I guess, what's the word for it, I guess, a, um, the temporary ability to implement um, a WWASC. So what ACWA is proposing in general is 11% um, on water, 5.4 on sewer, and then in addition the WWSC, which is the surcharge. So consumers could be the WISC is, as Mr. Schiebel, um, the WISC is depending on how much they really spend on their capital projects. Um, so you can kind of see what they're looking for. It, um, and I want you to notice because um, places like uh, Campbell's Creek. Uh, Bridal, uh, Lake Heritage, Bridal Woods, okay, those are all have water and sewer. And you're going to see, for example, if the water and sewer fees, um, what you're going to be paying per month, okay. Um, and then you have one with the WISC as well. Um, so someone's fee, water and sewer combined without the WISC, if you're 5,000 gallons like most, a lot of families are, Okay, your, your old rate, 157.83 to 170.37. Um, that's your average. And that's before the, that's before the surcharge on um, the WWSC. So, and, that's, and you've got another handout on that. That's variable. It can be up to 10%. So if it was, if you look at the one at the very bottom, if it was 10% on 170, you'd be paying another $17. So your water sewer bill would be, 187 a month if they did the 10 percent obviously on the the the, the whisk um, this is this is insanity um, the, there's no other to describe there's no other to describe what no, what no, this, no. Is. this is and uh, I, I really I really really think that we as a county need to at least do something um, to fight this um, and uh, I put in your board packet, if you look at number five, I put it into the board packet, um, some of the things that, um, number one says authorize the county attorney, and I'd like to, or special counsel. Um, I think that should say or special counsel. Um, in the past, um, Ms. Cosby has fought this for us. Ms. Cosby is no longer with Sands Anderson. She has done an unbelievable job in fighting it. Um, then the other thing, too, is I do, um, and I think you guys would probably agree with this as well, that um, the subdivisions, especially the ones with subdivisions with HOAs, should join us in some sort of fight dealing with this. Um, I will say that over the weekend, I did make contact with King George and Fluvanna County um, as far as seeing if they would be willing to go in with us. I have not. They're waiting on numbers from us. So that's why dealing with number three. Um, there is also a resolution in your, is the resolution, the resolution's not on the packet, is it? Yes, it is. Yes. Oh. 
It's in the handout right there, okay? There is a resolution um, which I think we, I would like for us to adopt, at least adopt the resolution. And yes, with, a, with an amendment um, at the very end of it where it says, there now be resolved that either direct the county attorney or special counsel to file notice of participation at the very bottom, depending on who we go with. Or special counsel. So, what I would uh, the last the last the last case. I mean, this affects two huge subdivisions. We talk about, um, you know, we talk about the the home values and stuff. I got to be honest with you. I mean, it's just it's it's just a reality that people. When they come into some of these subdivisions, if they and they hear a water wastewater fee, it, it if they hear that they will tend to stay away, um, and it and it's, that doesn't do anything for the home values. Um, that that will, does do nothing for our home values here in Caroline County, um, at all. And we're talking about obviously, especially the ones with water and wastewater. The last case that we had, uh, Mr. Emerson, the last case was. Oh, 55,000? I'm sorry. Yeah, it, two years ago, the case two years ago that went on for a while, it was mostly worked on by Ann Neal, and it was um, somewhere between fifty and 55,000 in fees. And, and some of that, some of the... No, not out of that. That was the legal fees and costs. And, um, and it probably was actually a little bit more than that because we probably did some of it under the retainer deal before. Um, opening a file, mm -hmm. you know, an actual file. Yeah, if you have an expert, you can add more tens of thousands to it easily. Yeah. So that's what we did, and I will tell you, the last time we did this, um, Ms. Cosby and the county attorney were very, very helpful um, in, in defeating one of the, one of the two rate cases. The, the, whisk was, um, the whisk was put to bed at that time, and now it's back two years later. Three years later. So the, the people in these subdivisions are facing potentially three rate hikes. I mean, they're going to face a water, wastewater, if they have wastewater, and they're also going to face a surcharge. Mr. Black. Yes. Um, in the water systems, we haven't included Elsinore. Um, Mr. Schiebel. Mr. Schiebel, the water systems, um, Elsinore is not in there. They're, they're part of Aqua. Yes, they should be included in there, Mr. So they're just not, they're, they're not listed at all with rates or You have that information, you just don't have it on the spreadsheet. Mr. Sheba, can you come up to the they, mic, please? They fall in the same category as? Is like Landor for the water. So the Elsinore people, their, their rate is 1762, and it's going to go up to 1879. Let me grab my other paper real quick, and I'll confirm it. That's the okay. base. That's just the base fee. Right. And I, I found that kind of uh, enlightening. Uh, one of my constituents happens to be on Aqua. And he was, Mr. Spinner was. I didn't uh, think Aqua was anywhere into yeah. the Manapanai right. district, but they're just providing water in that area. Yeah, right. In that area, it's water only. Um, Mr. Spinner was um, instrumental in the last case. Um, he did a lot. Um, and to help out in the last uh, case. If you can see here all the things, um, the last time around we asked the State Corporation Commission to come here. Uh, Mr. Seeley was also a big help in that case. Um, we had about 50 people, which I was hoping would, um, you know, would get more than that. I mean, we will definitely put the word out, but uh, we would like the State Corporation Commission to hear from some of these people, some of these bills that, 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 ha that, are, that are, you know, obviously have to be paid per month. Mr. Sheeple, I have one question while you're looking for that. I understand that in Lake Caroline, if you own an additional lot that's not built, that you not only, you pay the full water rate, since, even though there's no water connection on it. Have you seen or heard that? Yeah, that's actually there. It's uh, Elsinore subdivision is considered a W-2 customer, which is the same as what Lake Landor and Campbell's Creek would be considered for water. So the rate would be the same for Elsinore. Do you have any idea, me, you have any idea how many customers they have there? Because I thought that was a part of it's a small Lake system. Caroline. I don't, 
I don't even think there's 20 homes in there. Okay. One of the one of the other issues that's in this case, and which we have a hard time, at least, I think Mr. Schiebel would agree with me on this, is if when you talk about the WISC, that's another one. This surcharge. If you're in Elsinore or you're in Lake Landor, and I'm paying Aqua Virginia a surcharge. Um, there's no guarantee. I, I don't know if there's a guarantee that that's staying, that money for those people in Landor are staying in Landor, since they have segmented systems around the state. That money could be paying for a system in King George, or it could be paying for a system in um, wherever they own, in Roanoke. Um, I have not seen anything that would say otherwise. And so that's kind of one of the problems that some of the localities have with the WISC. One of the, one of the, one of the bullet points that you have here that I don't know that we can actually accomplish because it is asking the county attorney to draft proposed legislation banning the surcharge on the segmented system for consideration by the General Assembly. If you write a bill like that, you have to be willing to live at the General Assembly nonstop to get that moved through the whole process in a successful manner. Just putting a bill in is, is not going to do anything. It's going to get to committee and it's going to die. Right. And you'll have spent the money to write it and, and it's not going any place without a champion. Uh, the, the, the problem is... It's and going I, to need to be more than a delegate. You're going to have to have a real live, no kidding person that lives in those subdivisions down there talking. I, I mean, I've spent a good bit of time in the General Assembly <coughs> and I can tell you that if you have an issue and you really want it to move forward, You've got to be there to talk in committee to delegates, to state senators, right. to get that to happen. I'm the, just saying that yeah. this is... The only reason why I put that in, Mr. Seeley, is because the WISC, the rate cases, there's nothing the General Assembly can do about the rates, because that's the SCC, um, unless they were to. I mean, the General Assembly, I guess, technically could, but they usually leave that to the SCC. This is something that the General Assembly, last time around, did grant, um, did grant to, uh, I believe it was... Um, what is it? What's the other one? Not Aqua Virginia, but American Water. Um, that that private water company. But, but, um, you and so, a, but you need a personal champion to actually. I mean, I, I can tell you that for every <coughs> bill that goes in the General Assembly that has any success, there are 10 to 15 people following it between committees because sometimes it's not just one committee, and, and you've got to have a champion that's going to go to every legislator and tell them why. This needs to not happen. I'm just okay. writing it and putting it in the hopper really won't do us any good. Okay. Yes. 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 Mr. Sheeple, can you tell me on the water systems which ones chose to be a private system and which ones had no choice? Lake Caroline, do you know off the top of your head? I mean, Lake Caroline was currently. Lake Caroline was a, uh, was a private company at one time owned by Mr. Seltzer, Ladysmith Water Company. He sold that to Aqua. Yeah. Um, Landor Utility was uh, owned by another utility company prior to Aqua taking over. So Aqua was buying up small utilities. So I don't think any of them were currently operated by a homeowners association that Aqua has bought up. Um, Campbell's Creek was, was run by a, another subsidy um, that they bought up from there as well. So most of them are bought up from previous utilities. Did the homeowners have a chance to try to no. do no. anything with them? No. no. Uh, Mr. Seeley, to answer your question, Lake Caroline has an availability fee of $13.70 per month just to have the availability of water at their site, um, or they charge it at $41.10. Lake Landor has the same fee, um, except theirs is $10 per month or $30 per quarter. Um, and they list Lake Holly, Lake Monticello, and... Shawnee Land. So what was, because somebody told me Lake Caroline with this rate increase for the un, un, the availability field, availability fee for each lot would be, would go to $43. Um, it does not, this is not, it does not change in here. It is not redlined. So that fee stays the same. They're not changing the availability fees. Okay. And Lake Caroline's current water service is $43.20. That is changing, um, and that's in your sheet. Um. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, I don't know if you're comments now, but here yes, are a couple of thoughts. I have no problem with doing the resolution. However, 
this nightmare is not going to go away. It's a reoccurring nightmare uh, that's happening all over. I would really like to suggest that these communities come together, maybe even think about getting a lawyer and hiring, uh, creating a, a nonprofit group to fight this. You need citizen input. We can't fight these battles every two years. I think the homeowners are going to have to step up and stand up to Goliath a little bit. And I'd like to know what kind of uh, input or what kind of, of willingness you've, you've seen from the, the different property owners. I know when we were facing the railroad thing, yeah, uh, I had 30 people show up at a constituent meeting. This year I had five. You know, I mean, they needed, they needed help, and they were there, and they were willing to work. Have you had what type of response? They, uh, well, we just found out about this last, last month, so, uh, or several weeks ago. So the board and Landor is taking this up tomorrow. Um, my, my thought was that there was, we just kind of, we pool resources, and I agree with you. There needs to be, there needs to be some stake. Um, they need to have some sort of stake in the game. I don't disagree with that. Um, however, um, I just don't think that they're going to be able to put up, you know, $100,000 um, towards it. Um, and then the one entity that would be, um, they're taxpayers. Let's face it, they are taxpayers. They pay taxes like you and I. Um, and they didn't choose. If they moved in there, yes. If they moved in, they cho chose to be under that water system. But there's a lot of people um, that are in there that have been there for a very long time that didn't choose what's going on. Um, and that's in, that's in Lake Landor. That's in Campbell's Creek. Um, you know, that's in Bridalwood where you have your water. I mean, so there's different places around the county. We're one of the counties where it's most. We've got to be close to one of Aqua's biggest customers. I mean, the only other county that I know of that's bigger than us or is uh, Lake Monticello. And Fluvanna. Um, most of the other systems are, uh, are, are 214 water systems that they own in the state of Virginia. Right. In the Commonwealth. Right. Yeah. So they own, and uh, how many wastewater systems, though? Not as, nowhere near as many. Yeah. Looking. And that's the thing that's, that's the thing that's. that's I, I, I will, okay. Mr. Black, I will say that the only perspective I have on this is that Alqua has influence over 30% of our real estate. Right. They control the value of 30% of the real estate, and water will drive the cost of those homes either down or up. Yeah. And having that kind of control over that many... 17 sewer. 17 sewer. Mr. Sheeble, do you have any customers they have in Caroline? Uh, no, sir, I don't. Um, I can go through the systems real quick. I've got them But, I mean, Lake Caroline is roughly 1,300. Lake Landor is basically 1,700. Yes, so there's... They've got Twin Cedars. They also have Elsinore. Um, they have Countryside Apartments, which is in Lake Heritage, Lake Landor. And then they have um, Bridalwood Subdivision as part of that also. So they've got each one of those considered different systems. The commissioner's name Campbell's here, Creek. Mr. Cully, do you know how many re actual dwellings we have in the county? Is it around 10,000? You don't know. I don't... I don't Mr. Bassoon said it one night, I don't remember, but I think this represents right around 30% of the, of the real estate, which is really my concern. But I don't think that the, the, citizen, the whole citizenry should be bearing the brunt of, I mean, I see us contributing funds, but, but I do think we need buy-in from the other I, HOAs. I agree with you, and that's why I would like a letter sent out um, asking for some money for that. I agree with the letter. Can we go with the letter before we make the rest of the decision? Can we start with, when does the rate case start? When we, you need to, make a, you need to uh, file a notice of participation by sometime in October. I'm sorry, I, I don't and remember that's why the exact that's, date. That's why we're against and, it. And then, and then it moves pretty quickly, I mean, by... January, February, right in there, somewhere you've pretty much got to have everything in that you're going to argue and brief and expert uh, testimony. Is the, is the letter, of, is, is the letter of, of the, the participation of, simple to do? Yeah, yes, it should be fairly simple. So that's not, I mean... That's a retainer type of thing, right? Pretty much. Cost nothing. Additional. Yes. 
I'm just looking to keep their foot in the door. No, I understand. I, you, you, if you want to, if you really, um, if don't take this the wrong way. If you're considering, you know, having um, legal counsel, you know, fight this and argue on on uh, against what Aqua wants to do, then you really do need to file a notice of participation. Because okay. otherwise, you're you're um, you can kind of join in, but you can't present evidence, and you you just are you're 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 hampered. Yes, well, yes. Can I say something, Mr. Chairman? And this is... Um, uh, okay, here it is. Um, okay, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. You've got more time. I sent Mr. Cully an email with the deadlines a while back. Um, so it looks like January 16th is the deadline for the notice of participation to become a respondent party. But then... Then the deadline to file testimony is less than a month after that. So you need to know. I mean, whoever's going to do this needs to get moving on it. Can can we put in? My my suggestion was this: is we come up with a pool of money that we're willing to put in, and we say, hey, we're willing to put in. The last case cost us fifty fifty five. Was it fifty? Was it was, it, was it the fifty five thousand? That's that's what it cost last time. Yeah, fifty five. What about the one before that? Then? Is, this is the I second didn't go time. back. 